Police Scotland have been swamped by almost 4,000 complaints within just days of the SNP's chilling new hate crime bill coming into force. They say that they have to investigate every single one. This comes amid soaring crime rates in Scotland, a record 71,000 incidents of violent crime recorded last year, and with a meagre 16,600 police officers, Police Scotland's resources are at their lowest level since the force was formed. On top of that, it's emerged today that Scottish First Minister Hamza Youssef has been targeted with more hate crime complaints than J.K. Rowling over a speech he made in 2020. So the SNP have turned Scotland into a global laughing stock. High-profile celebrities like Elon Musk, so arguably the richest man in the world, Joe Rogan, who's, I think, the biggest podcaster in the world, and J.K. Rowling, the best-known author in the world, are all lining up to ridicule his new laws. Well, Olympic cycling hero and women's rights warrior Inga Thompson has added her voice. And I'm very pleased to say she joins me now. Inga, thank you very, very much. Now, you are prepared to go to quite extreme lengths to show your solidarity with J.K. Rowling, aren't you? Do you want to talk us through it? Yes, I think I made the comment that I would happily go to jail for J.K. Rowling and or for, for what we're fighting for with women's rights. And I think it's really important that, that this has been highlighted because we need to see the attack that's happening on women. And this is happening on so many different layers and levels. Like uh, I was threatened last year for... Um, just saying, calling a man a biological male when we were talking about sports. And I was told if I came back to France by Sandra Fautain, who is a transgender athlete there, that she would report me for a hate crime and I would be jailed. I've been turned into safe sport for basically stating biological male when it comes to sports. And so this is happening at every layer and level um, to women like me that don't have the voice like some of these famous people do. So watching this hate crime crime come through um, is disturbing. And yet at the same time, I think that it's good because it's getting out there in public uh, the attack on human, um, on women's rights. Like right now, trans rights mm. have every rights that, that everybody else have. We have sex separated rights for women for a reason. Yeah. And we're trying to protect that. And I think it's remarkable, actually, to realise how far this has gone. Now, it's worth noting that if the Police Scotland are saying that they're going to investigate every single report of a hate crime, then conceivably the current First Minister of Scotland has around 1,800 active investigations <laughs> against himself, which is, by any stretch of the imagination, completely bonkers. Normally politicians are asked to resign if they have one, but there we go. Maybe that just, just demonstrates how completely futile he actually views his own law to be. But this has gone global, hasn't it? Can I ask, what is... You, how did you come to hear of this? And, and has this, you know, shocked you about Scotland? This is going on in the UK. No, it hasn't shocked me at all. We've been watching this going on for years, that, that it has become a hate crime for women to ask for our own sex-separated sex spaces. And by calling a biological male a male, we're being, you know, threatened. We're being called transphobic and white supremacist and Nazi and fascist and bigot. And I mean, the list goes on. And when you don't have an argument, you start throwing out slurs and the women are standing up to this. We're standing strong. And so the next thing that comes around is you're going to throw us in jail for speaking biology, for speaking about our, our sex separated spaces. It, it, it's laughable. And, and I'm looking at your, your man that, that, wanted to put this through. So what's the comment uh, hung by your own petard mm. here that he puts this out and yet he's the one that has the most <laughs> um, yeah. most hate crimes going out against him. Yeah. Um, it's, let, me just, let, let, let me just play to you one, one clip and I'll come back to you. So, so this, is, this is the man of the moment, isn't it? This is Hamza Yusuf, okay? So this is some of his comments about his own ridiculous hate crime bill, all right? The only concern you should have when it comes to the new stirring up of hate, the new stirring up offences is if your behaviour is threatening or abusive and intends to stir up hatred. And, and by the way, even if that is the case, there are some defences, such as a reasonable person defence, and so on and so forth. So unless your behaviour is threatening or abusive and intends to stir up hatred, then you have nothing to worry about in terms of the new offences being created. Do you believe that? No, not, in, not for a moment, because every law can, is up for interpretation. And when you come up against this, when you just say biological male, they're calling it a hate crime. And to state a truth, to state a fact, can now be considered mm. 
a hate crime. And that is the problem with this bill is that it will be taken to another level to silence women. Mm. And that's what we're seeing here. And there's already been the threat with the JK. And then they've decided for whatever reason, they're not going to pursue it, but it will be pursued. Maybe they just don't want to go after JK. You think it will be it will be the little people. You get done. Yeah, it, it'll be people like me. I've already been threatened with this. Mm. And and we're, we're seeing this more and more even in the United States. And so it's going to be the people like me that will be threatened. And we're watching it on every layer possible. You know, um, we're watching nurses get threatened for stating biological facts. We're watching all the women athletes get, you know, threatened. Um, I've been warned by Safe Sport to not call a biological male a biological uh, male. Mm. Can, can I just on that? Because, look, you, I mean, it's hard to, I haven't really got the right words to describe how, how good of an athlete you, you were, right? But what, what, whatever you want to say, I mean, elite doesn't quite do it justice. But conceivably, conceivably, if you were around now, you might get beaten in your own category by a man, right? And how serious an issue is that? Because some people would say, Oh, well, you know, if that person lives as a woman or, or if they look a little bit like a woman, I know that there's, there's someone who presents a, a, a show on this channel who remarkably thinks that as long as the lady is petite enough, then it doesn't really, the man, I should say, is petite enough, then it doesn't really matter. Uh, why, why is this the kind of thing that you would go to prison for? Because right now what we're seeing is that specifically in sports, that once a male goes through full male puberty, there's no uncooking the eggs. There's no undoing this. They will always have a male advantage. And even if you take away all of their testosterone, mm. they're just now a man with male advantage with low testosterone. And when you look within men, uh, men can compete anywhere between 300 to 600 animals per liter where women are competing under two animals per liter. But once they've gone through the, the puberty process, the male advantage, it never goes away. And they're showing that with athletes, if they continue to train, there is zero reduction in the male advantage that they carry that they've gotten through puberty. And so, and, and when, when you ask me the question about why go to jail for this, the reason why I have the opportunities that I do as a woman is because of generations of women before me that have fought for my rights and they have gone to jail and they've been beaten and they've been told to be quiet.